Rahul Gandhi convicted in defamation case, sentenced to two years in prison, lost the parliament membership as well. The entire process of demand for grant completed in just 12 minutes. Approval through guillotine. Opposition parties protested fiercely. Leprosy eradicated from India. Health Ministry gave information in the Lok Sabha. This disease is caused by a bacteria. Aravali Green Wall project inaugurated based on the concept of African Green Wall program. The aim is to make the buffer area of Aravali mountain range green. And license of 18 pharma companies cancelled. Prohibition on manufacture of special products of three companies. Deaths caused in other countries cited as the reason. Recently, the Surat Port convicted Congress leader Rahul Gandhi in a defamation case. In this case, he was awarded with a two-year jail term. The court sentenced him under Section 499 and 500 of the IPC. In fact, during the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, the then Congress President Rahul Gandhi addressed a public meeting in Polar, Karnataka. During this, he had commented on a special title, surname, used in the name. Against this remark, BJP MLA Purnesh Modi filed a criminal defamation case in Surat Port. The case was filed under Section 499, 500 and 504 of the Indian Penal Code. If a person does such an act by resorting to false statements to defame someone and harm his reputation, due to which the reputation of that person gets tarnished, then it comes under the purview of defamation. That's why that person will be considered guilty of defamation in the eyes of the law. Significantly, defamation is defined under Section 499 of the IPC. There is a provision of punishment related to this under Section 500. According to this, if any person is found guilty of defamation, he can be punished by the court with imprisonment of up to two years of fine or both. And according to Section 504 of IPC, when a person intentionally insults someone with the intention of inciting him, however, the person knows that such incitement is likely to cause that person to commit a breach of the public peace or other offence, then for such act, that person shall be punished with imprisonment for up to a term which may be extended to two years or with fine or with both. Shri Rahul Gandhi's parliament membership was cancelled as soon as he was sentenced to two years. Due to constitutional and legal provisions, the Lok Sabha Secretariat issued a notification in this regard. In fact, Article 102 of the Indian Constitution has provisions regarding disqualification of a member of the parliament. Apart from this, the Representation of People's Act 1951 made by the parliament also provides for the disqualification of the members of the legislature. Section 8 of the Act specifies various offences and punishments for which membership of the legislature can be lost. Clause 1 of its Section 8 has listed such offences for which membership can be revoked upon conviction. These include promoting enmity between two groups, bribery, hate speech and unfair practices in elections. According to Clause 3 of Section 8, if a member of the legislature is sentenced to a minimum of two years in any case, he or she shall be disqualified from the date of conviction. Also, that person shall continue to be disqualified for a further period of six years since his release. However, Clause 4 of the same section exempted the disqualified members from immediate disqualification for three months to allow him time to appeal against his conviction. And this provision was repealed by a two-judge bench of the Supreme Court. Considering it beyond the powers of the parliament, the court held that the parliament had no power to enact such an exemption. The court gave this decision in Lily Thomas versus Union of India 2013. This has the effect that a sitting member may be disqualified immediately after conviction. Significantly, the Supreme Court had also made it clear in the case that in case the conviction and sentence is stayed by the appellate court, the membership of that person would be restored. It's noteworthy that Article 191 has disqualification provisions for the members of the legislature. Also, the 10th schedule talks about the disqualification of MPs and MLAs on the basis of defection. Recently, the demands for grants have been cleared through guillotine process in the Lok Sabha. With Parliament deadlocked, Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla ordered the guillotine to pass the budget and finance bills. After this, the demand for grants for the budget of 2023-2024 of various ministries were approved without discussion. The entire exercise was brought to an end in the House in just 12 minutes. 
opposition parties have registered their protest on this. Let's tell you that the word guillotine originally refers to a device that was made to give capital punishment by beheading. But in legislative parlance, guillotine refers to the speedy passage of financial bills by grouping them together. This is considered normal procedure in the Lok Sabha during the budget session. In fact, it is necessary to place the budget estimates of the expenditure before the parliament so that funds can be released to the government. For this, voting is done after debate in the House. Since the number of demands of various ministries is very large, it is not possible to discuss all of them. The Speaker then puts all the demands to vote and disposes them. These are usually passed by voice vote. Whether it has been discussed by the members or not, in Parliament, this process is known as the guillotine. Recently, the central government has laid down the procedures for the horning cattle and castration, branding or nose roping of any animal. Its purpose is to curb animal cruelty. The rules also lay down the method of euthanasia to save sick animals from painful death. The government has set this process 60 years after the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act came into force. This law has been implemented by the government for notification and described how painful procedures such as the castration of bulls, horses and other animals should be carried out. According to the notification, all the procedures will be carried out with the help of a registered veterinary doctor with the mandatory use of anesthetics. Significantly, the Prevention of 22 Animals Act was brought in the year 1960. For this, a provision has been made in this Act for punishment for causing unnecessary cruelty and pain to animals. In the sequence, the Animal Welfare Code of India was established in the year 1962 under Section 4 of this Act. The Act defines cruelty to animals in Section 11. Also under subsection 3 of this act, procedures like dehorning and castration, nor the roping of cattle, were excluded from the category of cruelty. Recently, Union Ministry of Health and Family Welfare informed that India has eliminated leprosy as per WHO standards. This information was given in reply to a question in the Lok Sabha. In reply, it was informed that the number of new cases of leprosy has come down from 1,25,785 in 2014-15 to 75,394 in 2021-22. In fact, WHO had set some criteria for this in the year 2005. According to this, if a country records less than one case per 10,000 population at the national level, then the concerned country will be placed in the category of leprosy eradication. Actually, leprosy is an infectious disease which is caused by the bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae. This disease mainly affects the nerves of hands, feet, skin, nose, eyes and upper respiratory tract. It is also known as Hansel's disease. This disease spreads when it comes in contact with an infected person. It can cause skin ulcers, nervous system disorders and weakening of the muscles. If it is not treated in time, it can cause deformity and disability. It is a common disease of many tropical or subtropical climate countries including India. Most of its cases come from Southeast Asia every year. At present, there is no exact treatment for this disease. Three medicines are used for its treatment. These, their names are Dapsone, Rifampicin and Clofazimine. The combination of these drugs is called MDT, that is, multi-drug therapy. Significantly, the government of India has launched the National Strategic Plan and Roadmap for Leprosy in January this year. Its aim is to bring the transmission of leprosy to zero level by 2027. The NSP includes these strategies, targets and overall technical guidance for the implementation of the program. Recently, the Indian Council of Medical Research issued guidelines for the application of artificial intelligence in biomedical research and healthcare. These are India's first ethical guidelines for the sector. These have been prepared by the Department of Health, Research and ICMR, Artificial Intelligence Cell. The purpose is to ensure ethical conduct of artificial intelligence in biomedical research and healthcare. These guidelines also provide a framework for ethical decision making during the development, implementation and adoption of AI-based solutions. In fact, AI in the health sector relies heavily on the data obtained from patients. This raises concerns about the use of AI in terms of potential biases, data handling, professional competence, data sharing, privacy. Hence, these guidelines have been created for all stakeholders interested in researching AI in healthcare. These include from manufacturers to developers, technicians, researchers, doctors, sponsors and funding organizations. Let us tell you that the potential of AI has increased in the healthcare. It is increasingly being used to improve medical practices. Currently, AI-powered medical devices are being used for rapid detection of diseases, providing personalized treatment. Along with this, it is also being used in automating the process of drug discovery and diagnosis of disease. 
This technology is proving to be effective in improving patient health as well as reducing the cost associated with healthcare. It is noteworthy that India is already streamlining AI technologies in various sectors, including Health through National Health Policy of 2017, National Digital Health Blueprint of 2019, and Digital Information Security and Healthcare Act 2018. Recently, a startup based on Imperial College, London, claims to have developed a technology that can biodegrade plastic. The company has named this process as Biotransformation. The name of the UK based startup is Polymateria. The startup claims that in this technology, microbes will biodegrade plastic packaging waste into simpler substance without leaving microplastic residues. Plastic made using this technology is a certain lifespan and looks like conventional plastic. When this plastic product reaches the end of its life and gets biotransformed in the form of organic wax after coming in contact with the external environment, it is then consumed by microorganisms and converted into water, CO2 and biomass. As a result, it is not harmful to the environment. It is worth mentioning that the e-commerce company Amazon produced about 321 million kilograms of plastic from packaging waste in 2021. According to one estimate, more than 1 billion kilogram of plastic packaging waste was generated from e-commerce firms worldwide in 2019. Significantly, the government of India had issued a notification in August 2021 to ban the use of single-use plastic, which was implemented from 1st of July 2022. Recently, the Union Minister of for Environment, Forest and Climate Change inaugurated the Aravali Green Wall project. It has been started from Ikli village, 13 kilometers from Gurugram. The objective of this initiative is to create a green buffer zone of about 5 kilometers of Aravali mountain range. Plantation and afforestation will be done on a large scale under the Green Wall project. During the event, an action plan to combat desertification and land degradation was also presented. The project is a part of the Union Forest Ministry's vision of creating Green corridor across the country. The project covers Haryana, Rajasthan, Gujarat, and Delhi. Under this project, rejuvenation and restoration of surface water sources like ponds, lakes, and rivers will be done. Also, native species of trees and shrubs will be planted on barren land and degraded forest land. According to experts, this will not only increase the green cover and biodiversity of Aravali, but will also improve soil fertility, water availability, and climate of the region. Apart from this, it will also help in achieving the national target of additional 2.5 billion tons of carbon sink by 2030. Apart from this, local communities will also get employment opportunities. Let us tell you that this project is based on the concept of African Green Wall Project. The African Green Wall Program was launched in the Sahel region of Africa containing the Sahara Desert. It was started with the aim of expanding the arable land in the Sahel region of Africa. According to media reports, the government of India is considering sending its tigers to the tiger range country of Cambodia. The reason for this is that the tigers are almost extinct. The government of India has signed an MOU with Cambodia last November. And thus, it was talked about sharing all the technical details and knowledge related to the restoration of tigers in the country. According to experts, the last tiger in Cambodia was seen in the year 2007, subsequently in April 2016. Cambodia declared the tiger functionally extinct. Functionally extinct means that the animal has no breeding population left in the country. Habitat destruction and illegal hunting have been cited as the reasons for their extinction. Let us tell you that the species of Indo-Chinese tiger is found in Cambodia. This tiger is small than the Royal Bengal tiger. Earlier, there were eight subspecies of tiger. Three of these species have become extinct. Now, only five subspecies of tiger exist. These include Royal Bengal tiger, Indo-Chinese tiger, Siberian or Amur tiger, Sumatra tiger, South China tiger, Talking about the Royal Bengal Tiger, it is mainly found in India, Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh. Significantly, 13 countries of the world are included in the Tiger Range, such as Bangladesh, Bhutan, China, Cambodia, India, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Nepal, Russia, Thailand and Vietnam. In 2010, the Tiger Range countries had set a target of doubling the tiger population by 2022. India had created history by completing the target ahead of time. At the same time, Laos and Vietnam are such when their population has become extinct. Recently, the regulators of Central and State Drug Control Office cancelled the license of 18 pharma companies. Apart from this, the manufacture of special products of three companies was also banned. This action was taken after checking 76 companies from 20 states and union territories. For this investigation, samples of medicines and other pharma products were randomly collected from various pharma companies. The action comes into time when India is trying to establish itself as a global pharma major by providing quality medicines at affordable rates. It's in many countries due to the products of Indian pharmaceutical companies is the main reason for this investigation. 
A few days ago, 70 children died in the country of Gambia and the syrups made by Haryana-based Maiden Biotech was said to be the reason for this. Two syrups manufactured by Noida-based Marion Biotech were linked to deaths of 18 children in Uzbekistan. Manufacturing at both the companies was put on hold following inspections by joint teams. Significantly, those who open a pharmaceutical company in India and manufacture various pharma products have to take a license under the Drugs and Cosmetics Act of 1940. If companies violate the rules mentioned under the law, their license is cancelled. Recently, the Lieutenant Governor of Anman and Nicobar Islands has constituted a committee to get views on the impact of the Great Nicobar Project. The committee has been constituted to stop the displacement of tribals and safeguard their interests. It is worth mentioning that in January 2022, Niti Ayog started the Great Nicobar Islands project at a cost of Rs 72,000. The project includes construction of a transshipment port, an airport, a power plant and a greenfield township. An area of 7,114 km of tribal reserve area is to be used in the development of this project. The region is inhabited by the Shompin tribe, which is classified as a particularly vulnerable tribal group. The committee constituted by the LGA has been specially constituted for the protection and security of this tribe. However, even when the project was started, it was opposed by many environmentalists. They said that the development of this project would adversely affect the ecosystem there. Actually, this area is very rich in terms of biodiversity. Coral reefs are spread over an area of about 116 hectares in the Galatia Bay. In addition, the area is a reputed nesting site for the giant leatherback turtle. The giant leatherback is the world's largest sea turtle. Apart from this, more than 300 species of animals are found on this island. Also, the island is a habitat for many birds. Let us now look at the five questions based on the bulletin. Questions for this series are, first question is, consider the following statements. One, defamation has been defined under section 499 of the Indian Penal Code. Two, under section 500 of the Indian Penal Code, there is a provision of punishment related to it. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? One only, two only, both one and two, or neither one nor two. Next question is, consider the following statements. 1. The provisions relating to the disqualification of a member of parliament are in Article 102 of the Indian Constitution. 2. The Representation of People Act 1951 also provides for disqualification of the members of the legislature. 3. A member of parliament is disqualified from the date of conviction if he has been sentenced for at least 2 years. 4. Convicted members will be ineligible to contest elections for 6 years since their release from punishment. Which of the above statements are correct? 1 and 4 only, 2 and 3 only, 1 and 2 only or all of the above. Next question is with reference to Aravali Green Wall Project, consider the following statements. 1. Aravali Green Wall Project has been inaugurated from the Tikli village of Haryana. 2. It aims at greening a buffer area of about 5 km of Aravali mountain range. 3. The project is based on the concept of African Green Wall Initiative. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 1 and 2 only, 2 and 3 only or all of the above. Next question is consider the following statements. 1. Leprosy is caused by a bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae. 2. According to WHO standards, leprosy has been eradicated from India. 3. Another name for leprosy is Hansen's disease. Which of the statements given above is or are not correct? 1 only, 1 and 2 only, 1 and 3 only or none of the above. Last question is, in which year the Animal Welfare Board of India was established? 1962, 1965, 1969 or 1952? Recently, the Union Home Ministry has decided to withdraw of SPA, that is Armed Forces Special Powers Act from the disturbed areas of three states of Northeast. These states include Assam, Manipur and Nagaland. This decision of the government has been implemented from 1st April 2023. After this, AFSPA will be removed from one district of Assam, four police stations in Manipur and three in Nagaland. In fact, after independence, there was an increase in the incidence of extremism in the northeastern region of the country, including Nagaland. As a result, the AFSPA law was brought by the central government in the year 1958 to help the army to act against insurgency. 
At present, this law is applicable in many states of the Northeast, including Jammu and Kashmir. According to media reports, the second phase of caste-based census will be started in Bihar from coming April 15. The Bijak app will be used for this survey. The survey will collect personal information including caste, name and religion along with socio-economic indicators. This information will be collected on both the mobile app and a physical form. Apart from this, a separate code has also been arranged for checking transgender persons. According to media reports, India's first cable state rail bridge is expected to be ready by May 2023. This bridge is being built on the Anji River in Jammu and Kashmir. This bridge will connect Riyasi to Katra in Jammu. This cable state rail bridge is part of the udhampur srinagar Baramulla rail link project. Konkan Railway Corporation Limited is developing this bridge. Recently, the National Green Tribunal in New Delhi imposed a fine of Rs 10 crore on the Kerala government. This fine has been imposed due to the pollution in Vemanad and Ashtamudi lakes and the failure of the Kerala government to check it. The NGT in its order said that the fine has been imposed on the basis of polluter pays principle. Let us tell you that Vemanad is the largest lake in the state of Kerala. It was declared as a Ramsar site of international importance in the year 2002. To talk about Ashtamudi Lake, it is located in Kollam district of Kerala and it was also declared a Ramsar site in the year 2002. Recently, PNGRB that is Petroleum and Natural Gas Regulatory Board implemented the unified tariff rate to fix the pricing of natural gas. This new rate will be applicable from 1st April 2023. According to experts, the beginning of the implementation of the unified tariff will improve the energy and natural gas sector. In addition, this tariff mechanism will also help India achieve the One Nation One Grid One Tariff model. Due to this, gas markets in far-flung areas will also get a boost. Recently, the Ministry of Defence signed contracts for the purchase of improved Akash weapon system and 12 weapon locating radars, Swati radars field for the army to detect weapons. The advanced Akash weapon system is a short-range surface-to-air missile. It has been indigenously designed and developed by DRDO. This advanced Akash weapon system with seeker technology has the capability to act in all directions. Talking about the radar Swati, it is capable of detecting the exact position of the firing guns, mortars and rockets. Lately, for the first time on March 19, 2023, FLNAT, that is Foundational Literacy and Numeracy Assessment Test, was conducted. Learners from the age of 15 years to more than 80 years appeared in this examination. This exam was organized under the new India Literacy Program. Nav Bharat Saksharta Karekram is a centrally sponsored scheme approved by the Government of India. It will be implemented during the financial year 2022-27. to The scheme is in line with the recommendations of the National Education Policy 2020. Recently, the first conclave was organized between the Chiefs of Army Staff of India and African countries. It aims to promote regional security and stability and work with African countries to enhance defense capabilities. Also, as part of the regional cooperation mechanism, the coordination between the armies of India and African countries is to be strengthened. The conclave was held during the second Africa-India joint exercise F-Index in Pune, Maharashtra. These exercises include counter-insurgency operations, peacekeeping, maritime security and specialized training such as cyber warfare and drone operations. It was started in the year 2019 and the theme of the conference was Amrut, that is Africa-India Militaries for Regional Unity. Recently, the State of India's Environment Report 2023 was released. The report covers a range of topics including climate change, agriculture, industry, water, plastics, forest and biodiversity. In the report, warnings have been given about the major threats related to the environment in the year 2022-23. The report says that there have been encroachments on more than 30,000 water sources at the national level. The report claims that air pollution in India has reduced life expectancy by an average of 4 years and 11 months.